while when I was working as, an, as a youth national coach, it was always working with the individual skills, always mm -hmm. trying to not make them win at the moment, but be so good so they can win later on when it's important to win. And mm -hmm. it's important to win when you become a senior player. It, it makes no difference when you're a youth player. Of course, it can motivate you and it's nice to win. But uh, from my experience, I can see that a lot of the players who won a lot when they were young, they will never become good senior players mm -hmm. uh, because maybe the, all the winning has made them lazy mm -hmm. or they have become in a position where they think, now I know handball, but nobody knows handball uh, good enough. Mm -hmm. So it's very important that you have left wing uh, and then you should have players like Anna Sekert. Mm -hmm. uh, who's good at uh, very specific things. You should have a player like Magnus Landin, who's very good at different things. And then you have Kasper Wim Mortens, who is different, uh, good on some other things. Mm -hmm. And it's very important that we develop different types on every position seen over a lot of years, both because then it's easier for the national coach to pick the types that he likes and mm -hmm. he needs to win, but also... Hey, Klaus. Hi. Klaus, who are you? Well, I'm a Danish handball coach. Uh, I'm 48 years old. Uh, I'm working as head coach in Skjern handball uh, mm -hmm. right now. I've done that since July. Started as an assistant coach last summer. Before that, I've been in the Danish Handball Federation on the male side uh, for uh, 15, 16 years. Uh, mm -hmm. Starting as regional coach and then become youth national coach and uh, head of the talent development on the male side. So mm -hmm. that's my primary work over the last 20 years, you can say. Mm -hmm. And where are we right now here? We are in Skjern. We It's uh, almost Sunday noon now. We have had a, <laughs> a practice this morning uh, between two matches. Uh, so we have been working this uh, morning, a little evaluation from mm -hmm. the last game against Aarhus and then we are looking ahead for Lemby uh, that we are meeting on Tuesday and then had a court in, uh, practice on the, on the court with some details uh, from the last match and something we can work on to the next match. How happy are you that you are right now coach for a men's team and not working in the federation? So how is the difference in your, in your work, in your motivation? Uh, my motivation is uh, still good, uh, otherwise I wouldn't have been here and not been working with handball for that many years. Uh, I think uh, that the, the, main, the main difference is that uh, working with the young talents and development in, in, in my approach mm -hmm. to it, then it's very much about uh, developing the, the talent, the, the player, working with the whole. Uh, human being and not only handball and mm. not thinking in that much in results uh, and here of course I am measured on if we are winning games or we are losing games mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it's still handball mm -hmm. and it's still developing players uh, in my opinion talent is not about age it's about your mindset if you are curious if you want to develop and become a better handball player then I still believe you could be called an Atalant even if you are 35 or 38. Mm -hmm. Did you see maybe three differences um, right now in your work? Are you, are you different acting as a coach on the field or did you prepare the practice in a different way? Can you, us, uh, can you give us three examples <coughs> maybe when you see it? Yeah, of course, in the, in the work with the, with the players, there's a huge difference be between meeting the players maybe uh, six, uh, nine times a, a year mm -hmm. and then here working with the players in everyday life. So of course my, uh, I am much closer uh, to the players here. I can mm -hmm. work with them every day, uh, getting to know them every day, getting uh, to know how I can motivate them, how I can uh, stay them on the right uh, track. Uh, mm -hmm. And of course another difference is the age. Uh, when you are working with uh, youth national players, they are between 17 and 21, and that's a different age than here. I have players from 19 to 38, uh, so of course that's also another uh, approach towards uh, the players. How I work, how I work with them in planning the uh, practice. Um, of course, there is much more tactical work here. Uh, 
preparing the next match, evaluating mm. the former match. While when I was working as a, as a youth national coach, it was always working with the individual skills, always mm. trying to not make them win at the moment, but be so good so they can win later on when it's important to win. And mm. it's important to win when you become a senior player. It, it makes no difference when you're a youth player. Of course, it can motivate you and it's nice to win. But uh, from my experience, I can see that a lot of the players who won a lot when they were young, they will never become good senior players mm -hmm. uh, because maybe the, all the winning has made them lazy or mm -hmm. they have become in a position where they think, now I know handball, but nobody knows handball uh, good enough. Mm -hmm. In the way when you um, make an exercise and maybe you correct something or mm. you see something, did you skip? things right now when you when you see something did you skip something because you could imagine maybe the player knows what what was wrong did you skip understand I, yeah yeah i i i understand the question mm -hmm. i i definitely uh, stay with my idea about uh, working with the players individual uh, mm -hmm. so i also stop the practice here talking about if you move a little in that direction if you pass a little earlier if you go mm -hmm. up a little later or what it could be so i will still do that but not as often mm -hmm. as i would do if it was a youth team because mm -hmm. here i will break the the rhythm of the practice more If I do it here, they, they, we have to have some flow in our uh, practice uh, mm. where I could do it more if it's a youth team. And I also think it's important that you do it more at that age, but I still do it here because uh, I'm so uh, lucky. So I have a bunch of players who still want to become better. So they also like to be told if you do that a little different, then maybe you can create a bigger space or what it could be. Is this hard for you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, working with the people is the most uh, most interesting thing. I've, mm -hmm. I hope you can hear it when I talk about it, that, that still the individual development uh, is very important. I think if a, if a team has an has a individual level here and a collective level here, if you mm -hmm. should raise it. You can, in my opinion, just work six against six. You have to make them better here and then improve here. Mm -hmm. So it's in, in the end, it's still how good you are one against one two against two mm -hmm. uh, you can play you go you can play whatever you want if you're not able to finish it you don't have the ability to shoot or go one against one then it doesn't matter what you play mm -hmm. how important is your is your tactical structure here in scan and how important was it in the uh, in the federation so how many I would say on an easy way, mm. how many tactical movements do you have here? Did you have more here or more in the Federation and the youth national teams? I have uh, way more here. Way uh, more? Yeah, mm. way, way more. Uh, uh, also because they have had very good coaches before I arrived. Mm. So they already have a, have a, have a game. Mm. So it's not for me to, to make a revolution. Mm -hmm. It's to implement new things, new new ideas, smaller things, uh, but but the but the main play is already here. Mm -hmm. uh, we had very little tactical uh, things when I was a youth national coach, mm -hmm. uh, especially under 18, under 19. It was very very simple because I really wanted to make them learn handball individual. And of mm -hmm. course, when it was under 20 and under 21, then more and more tactical, mm -hmm. but not as near as the level here. Also because I think it's very important when you are youth national coach that you uh, never become a club coach. You, mm -hmm. you have to find new players. You see new players who should have the chance to be brought into the international scene. So when I had a youth national team over four years, we had uh, 75, 80 players who put the, the red shirt on and was mm -hmm. proud of that. I think that motivates. Uh, and it's more important to motivate a lot of teenagers than to win uh, some medal. Okay, um, let's talk exactly about this, this point, about the selection, mm -hmm. about the, the way how, when did you start to looking up for the first talents? You, you 14, you 15, when did they start to come that, that is a player and it's come on the list? So maybe first in the region and then on whole Denmark. 
how yeah. is this uh, the the structure is that that uh, that the federation start uh, local uh, mm -hmm. 11 different districts mm -hmm. uh, when they are 14 or 15 years old then the club coaches pick out players from their team and they bring them into the federation so they can look at them mm -hmm. uh, i think it's could be improved a lot if the federation spent the money to go out to the clubs and pick them themselves mm -hmm. because i'm i'm not sure that uh, i'm i really uh, like the work that the club coaches do but i'm not sure that they know uh, how to select a player uh, who could be the best in 10 years. Of course, they can see who is the best right now, but I, in my experience is that they often forget some of the late bloomers, some mm -hmm. of the players that can rise and shine later on. Uh, so I think it would be better if you turned it, uh, if you turned it, uh, turned it around. Just one question, is, mm -hmm. it, um, is there any options for tournaments in the region or did they, is it whole selection start at the beginning comes from the club coaches yeah and some somewhere in denmark when they where they uh, do it maybe a little uh, um, on another way uh, mm -hmm. then then they go out and see go out and see the players and of course you also see some club matches so mm -hmm. so it's not that if you're not picked the first time then you can't be picked uh, but but you but but it's how they mm. how it is and from there they practice once a month uh, in two years and then they play some matches the regions against each other and then you pick players from there into uh, a group of around 70 players uh, in 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 uh, a mm. generation of mm. two years mm. and from that group you will pick the national team mm -hmm. um, the cultures in the districts in the region. Did they came from the federation, or did they also work as a club coach? They also work as club coach. It is uh, it is uh, voluntary work in mm -hmm. in these regions, and I would also say, in the first level in the federation, it is also almost voluntary work. If you compare how many days and hours they use and what salary they get, then it's not because of that. And luckily, it isn't. But but still, I think that uh, that that uh, that if we in the Danish Handball Federation spend more money on that level on the coaches, mm -hmm. then we could do a better work. Mm -hmm. What are the the key facts, the aspects uh, when, a, when a coach takes a look at the U15 player? What makes a U15 player a talent? Yeah, very good question and very complex uh, question because it's it is really uh, interesting because I think you could look at the level right now, mm -hmm. but you have to look into the potential. Uh, and I think we tend to look very much at the level right now, not only in the federation, but also mm -hmm. in the clubs, because the next game is so important. Instead of looking at the potential and see how good they can become, if we were better at uh, doing that, then we would have even more talents that we have. Mm -hmm. But for me, potential is very important because youth handball and senior handball is two different things. Because it's the same court, uh, but the players are growing. They are becoming taller and bigger and broader, uh, mm -hmm. wider. So, so it's different competences that you should have becoming a good senior player than a mm -hmm. good youth player. Is there any, I would say, a paper or something from the federation? Because we can. On, on, on an easy describe, we can watch on two things. We can watch is the player good, or we can uh, take a take a place. What is the specific of the player? Is he is he a fast small guy in a one on one? Mm. Is he is he a tall guy, or is he mm. really good on the on, on shooting things? Yeah. Or how did you um, did you look especially for these things? Because at the end, we must say that the Danish male national team got a lot of different players with a lot of big strengths yeah so and how did they well we are we are we are talking uh, um, have been talking for 10 years about something we are calling the the uh, the uh, shelf mm -hmm. you have with a lot of uh, uh, different uh, uh, just like that on your right so you can yeah. say that uh, menu, huh? so it's very important that you have left wing uh, and then you should have players like Anna Sekert mm -hmm. uh, who's good at uh, very specific things you should have a player like Magnus Landin 
who is very good at different things, and then you have Kasper Mortens, who is different, uh, good on some other things. Mm -hmm. And it's very important that we develop different types on every position seen over a lot of years, both because then it's easier for the national coach to pick the types that he likes and mm -hmm. he needs to win, but also so so that we don't uh, look at uh, maybe line player uh, we have. Mm -hmm. Maybe if we had a uh, 10 like René Toft, he is a very, very good line player, but sometimes it's also good to have a type like Anna Sagriesen. Mm -hmm. So it's very important that the youth national coach and the talent coaches, they really look into different types on different positions uh, so that we can make the, big, the best team mm -hmm. from, uh, from many different qualities. Mm -hmm. um my last stop was Norway mm -hmm. and one experience there was that they have a really fast game yeah. and a lot of youth coaches also from the, from the development for their federation mm. tell me that this is a problem because in the, in the youth they have a really fast game and all the tall players or the big guys mm. fell out of the system because they can't, um, they can't be a part of it. Exactly. Is there any um, like that here in Denmark? Or yes. could you say it's an... It is, uh, it is exactly the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, you can be in a youth uh, team if, if, if you are tall but you are still strong. Mm -hmm. Then you can be into the uh, game but, uh, but uh, we have the, uh, the same issue here uh, mm -hmm. that, uh, that it is very hard uh, for the players who go into to their maturement and, uh, and grow very fast in a, in a year to be, to be in, a, in a game because the, the spaces are so big. So if you are smaller and, and you have a better control of your body, then it looks much more like good handball mm -hmm. than if you have a tall player who is it's not that fast and maybe you don't catch the ball all the time. Mm -hmm. The coordination isn't that good developed. But in the end, when you look at international male players, you can see how many that is beyond 192 and then we need to have these players. But I have to say once more, it's still about what are you uh, promoting in youth handball. In Denmark, we are still promoting the teams that win. So you can come into a better group, you can play better matches, and mm -hmm. the hype around winning has become much uh, more focused uh, uh, after social media. Mm -hmm. For example, I think you can talk about talent uh, development before Facebook and after Facebook because now the, also the clubs, they are promoting themselves on winning. But mm -hmm. who is having the best de uh, development um, atmosphere? Who is having the best training? It's not sure, I'm not sure that it's always uh, the team that wins. Mm -hmm. uh, but if they have the best players right now or they pick them, then they win. And then all the players go to these uh, mm -hmm. clubs. So a main easy answer for this could be when the clubs work with social media, they should promote all the talents that play right now in the national team that they grow up and build more than the results from the last weekend yeah, with the yeah. United. I think it's, it's, yeah, it's so important how mm. you build your culture in your club, how, uh, club, how you promote, mm. what, what is it you want to promote, uh, because it means a lot for the culture. We also in Denmark uh, many years have had a lack of good defense players. Mm -hmm. uh, and the best defense players, they become good defense players when they have been abroad because you are playing much more tough handball mm -hmm. in Germany and France. So we can see that the best defense players, they, they have been, been abroad. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's also that when you look at Danish youth matches, you're always talking about attack, who's making the goals. You are never saying, oh, he's a good He's a good uh, uh, defender. If we talk more about defense, uh, who is making the blocks, who is making the stops, then I think it would motivate the young players more into defense. So we are we are making our own mistakes. Mm -hmm. um, the the value or not the value the the sports culture here in Denmark is really big. Mm. So you have a I think a high percentage that uh, young player, uh, young young kids, young children make sports in an organization. Yeah. How uh, is the development? The first selection starts at U15. Mm. Is there any aspects of a centralization here in in, in Denmark? In the in the clubs. 
Mm, yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe in the clubs, but maybe more with the school. So I know um, that there are. I hear that the best two are Skanderborg and Gog, maybe. Mm -hmm. So um, how is um, that system works with the federation? Are there a lot of uh, centralization, or maybe when that U15, you'd like to have all U15 players, the best together, the the whole month or the whole year? Is there any aspect of that? No, because we have that this um, traditional structure mm -hmm. with a lot of clubs and with a lot of holes, mm -hmm. and that's I think that's the main secret about what you call the Danish success. It's hard to say when you are Dane, but uh, but it's nice to hear. But we have, uh, uh, when you look into how many people we are, then we have uh, extremely many handball holes. And, mm -hmm. and, of, and then it's easy to get access to handball. Mm -hmm. And I think that's that's one of the reasons that, that, that we have had that success. Mm -hmm. um, in my opinion, and this is only f f my opinion, I think it would be better with less centralization. Mm -hmm. I can see that of course it is good that you practice with good players, but I think right now that we miss that players have to carry their own team. When you have centralized so much, then they, they get to easy matches. Mm -hmm. And I can see that some of the players who becomes very good uh, uh, the last 20 years, they have been staying in a smaller local club for a longer time, knowing then when we play Sunday, if I play good, we have a chance to win. If mm -hmm. I play bad, then we don't have a chance to win. I think that's a positive pressure, uh, developing players who are able to handle pressure. Mm -hmm. Instead, now I was watching our under-19 game yesterday, and their bench, their bench players are so good, and I think it's a pity that they don't play more handball. Mm -hmm. uh, all, it's good when they practice, but I think they play too. Uh, they play le uh, to less minutes to become good handball players. So I would like that we decentralized mm -hmm. a lot more. But when we say maybe when we take a look at these schools, mm -hmm. um, there are, are there public schools and uh, private schools? Yeah. Also okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, maybe, but but then they they practice on the school maybe with the best players, it and then they go to the clubs. To yeah. the clubs at, yeah. the, at the weekend. I think this is a um, a midway. Of, of both um, ways, maybe in my head. Yeah. Um, it, it, and I think they have very good coaches, these places, and they practice very good. Mm -hmm. but, but so it's not saying that it's not a good work. I'm just not sure that it's the best for the Danish handball. Mm -hmm. uh, and the federation, they are they are not into this centralization. But I would like if the if the federation had a clearer uh, statement towards mm -hmm. what is what is good centralization, what is bad centralization, so that they have a more clear attitude uh, towards it. Mm -hmm. um, would you say that these um, the the young talents here in Denmark are really have an intrinsic motivation more than that you? have to put a lot of pressure on it, on the, on the players. How could you describe these mental things? Yeah, the mental uh, things, yeah. yeah. I, I, I can honestly say that, that the players succeeding, mm. they have the motivation from, in, from mm. inside. And mm. that's to, to go back to the social media. I see a lot of uh, hype from the outside. Uh, and I think it can work for you in a certain period of time but if you don't have it from from the inside the motivation then you are not able to put the work into it that that you should have i think the there's a lot of uh, fragile mm -hmm. vul vulnerable uh, mm -hmm. young teenagers who have a hard time staying in handball top handball if they don't have it from the inside if you are if it's necessary for you to get praised from the outside to think that handball is good, then I think mm -hmm. it's a matter of time when you quit. Mm -hmm. You worked uh, for 16 years in the Federation. Yeah. What are the main changes or the main differences from there to right now? So what are your, what did you build up or what did, was your um, idea or your vision 16 years back ago? Would mm -hmm. you say you reach it? And Good question. Uh, no, I didn't. I didn't reach it uh, mm -hmm. uh, because there were still some certain things about it that didn't work when I left. That's mm -hmm. also a part of why I left. Uh, that I couldn't keep doing the work that I like to do. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's another story. But but I think that that we 
because it was not only me, of, of course, course but, but but we made a, a, an effort mm. to go more into development than results. We looked more into making good senior players than winning in under 18. We did a lot by trying to motivate more players because we switched so many players also in the youth uh, uh, tournaments when we world championships, European championships, that we gave a lot of the young players a chance. So I think we, we did a lot of things changing the, the whole attitude uh, or the mindset about talent development, going f uh, to look more from the, into the long space. You can say we went, also may say we went from using glasses to uh, using what do you call it? Uh, oh, I have no idea. Uh, yeah, I know what it is. Yeah, yeah. Away. What they are when they are looking glass, at yeah. the birds. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So it's so the perspective mm -hmm. became much longer, and I think that was the biggest effort because I really believe that it uh, benefit a lot of young handball players. Did you also engage you for the development of the coaches? Yes, yes. Because I think the mindset of the coaches is very important. Mm -hmm. to develop the players uh, if uh, so so we did a lot of work in also trying to adjust their perspectives and i did a lot by saying that <clears throat> it's not important for you to be here if if you have success in a club coach to come mm -hmm. here I, I i would like to see you work in your every day see if you're a good development coach that you are good in adjusting things and making good practice then you can come into the federation mm -hmm. uh, so it's it's to be, to to do what you say. That mm. is what was very important. Oh, okay, okay. So for the because a lot of players, yeah, yeah. They, and coaches, they can say the right thing, but then they go into the hall and do something else, uh, different. <laughs> yeah. to be, uh, but 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 it was important to get mm. to get coaches in that could be the right am, am, ambassadors for the Danish way. Mm. Can you describe uh, the stereotype of Danish coach? <laughs> Yeah, funny question. Uh, I I I I think that the that the Danish, the typical Danish coach, is uh, very good with the players, good mm -hmm. at handling players, good uh, in the uh, with the on the human on the human act mm -hmm. aspects. Think, <coughs> sorry, that the typical Danish coach is maybe using more time on attack than mm -hmm. on defense. Mm -hmm. uh, we are have a lot of creative types we we like the collective things like like uh, passing we we like shooting exercises we we like the exercises two against one three against two four against three and you can see that in the development of the danish handball player uh, so so i think that is some of the main topics and it's also uh, coaches that likes to be in the hall a lot of time uh, a lot of time mm -hmm. uh, spend spend a lot of hours Mm -hmm. um, from my um, view of a board, so from Germany, mm -hmm. or maybe right now I talk a lot with uh, the Norwegian coaches, mm -hmm. when we describe a Danish coach, mm -hmm. then it's always um, a big impact on the, on the technical things. Yeah. And a lot of, um, right you say in the beginning of our interview, mm -hmm. a lot of stops, yeah. talk about this situation, <coughs> talk about the choose of the technique, and then yeah develop the technique. Could you uh, agree with that? Yeah, I can agree mm. on that. Uh, that is not only practice for the practice and mm. the high in high intensity, but uh, there is a, a very good tradition uh, that the coaches are good at saying if you put your arm mm. up or if you put the left foot uh, in mm. in front of you. So I think uh, that Danish coach is, is uh, good in, in co co making correct uh, or mm. adjustments in the different exercises. And where would you say that the Danish coaches have potential? Um, on ma many, many uh, <laughs> aspects. Uh, <clears throat> I, I still think that uh, using more time on defense, mm -hmm. um, being better uh, to implement the right physical training. Um, and then I also think, but it's not the... It's not the you can not blame the coaches on uh, that because the tradition is if you make good results then you advance uh, but i think it would be nice for youth coaches if they work more with all the players giving attention to all the players in your group mm -hmm. and not only the seven best that would uh, really 
uh, be an improvement. Mm -hmm. uh, the we talk about a little bit about the technical, about the passing. You say mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. um, when we look from from the outside, we see this really specific pass technique from mm -hmm. the dance. Mm -hmm. Where does it come from? Oh, it, yeah, I think you have to look <coughs> maybe 20, 25 years back uh, mm -hmm. where we, we got a lot of um, inspiration from Sweden uh, and the Swedish players are also very good at uh, passing. But maybe the Swedish players and the Swedish tra tradition is more systematic than the Danish. So I think that the, what can you say, uh, the twist on the Danish passing technique is maybe that we are a little more um, what can you see? We are we are not teasing, but we are we are we are trying different things. If we we are told to make that pass ten times, then in from seven passes, then we try something else. So I think mm -hmm. that we are more maybe more creative, and we try to do different things. But it, there there was a generation of coaches, uh, Torben Winter, uh, Ole Nørgaard. Carsten Albregsen, Fleming Pedersen and a lot of other coaches uh, that I also should have mentioned who put this passing uh, in system in the federation and then from the federation it went into the clubs mm -hmm. and now it's a, it's a very big part of the club training mm -hmm. but if I but if I look at the level right now I think that the passing technique is uh, not as good as it was uh, maybe 8-10 years ago The, the, the passing technique uh, from the Danish players from maybe 28 to 35 uh, is mm -hmm. better than from 20 to 28. That would be my uh, suggestion or okay. maybe a little pro provoking mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. say that because I think <clears throat> when I see a lot of youth uh, training I see that they are passing but they are not stopping. They are just letting them pass, but not telling them why to pass. Mm -hmm. So all the small adjustments where maybe 15, 20 years ago, they whistled, say, no, foot here, there. Now they just let, let, let them the pass. Flow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so I think that, this, that the level of passing it is, de is decreasing right mm -hmm. now. Because you're expected, because <coughs> you think it's culture thing, we don't have to... We have to stay focused on this. Yeah, and I also mm -hmm. think <coughs> that it's a new gen generation of players. Uh, mm -hmm. They are brought up with Netflix. They are mm -hmm. brought up with uh, with a lot of things where they shouldn't be patient. So mm -hmm. young Danish uh, players, they are, had, don't have patience. And I think maybe we give them too much instead of really trying to put them into the patience uh, that they are not used to because we are so spoiled as a nation so we can pick whatever we want to in every situation we, we never have to wait huh. but in handball and develop in handball you need to wait and have patience in order to become a good handball player mm -hmm. would you say that's that, a concern okay um, what do you think how much time did you spend uh, 10 years earlier for passing so for practice when we have a 90 minutes practice <coughs> um, and how much is it now I think you, we spend a little less, mm -hmm. but not that much, but a little less time passing now and more six against six in the youth, which I think is a pity. But the main thing is that we don't correct as much as we did 15 years ago. Okay, Because then it's then the, you can use 20 minutes on passing, but mm -hmm. it's almost a waste of time mm -hmm. if you don't tell the players what is good and what is not that good. Make the corrections. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, exactly yeah. Um, I got these... Um, could, you, could you say that, the, just for the passing, yeah. um, could you say that it's an, first an individual passing, so just a two, a two, two mm -hmm. and then going into a continuum maybe or yeah. something in a, in a way like that? <coughs> Can you give us maybe the the three or five um, words you, you say the first thing is a high arm uh, foot uh, to the goal yeah, the exactly. main correct uh, correct thing yeah 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 things, yeah so. I, yeah when when you, when you stand there then it's uh, so important that you are in balance mm -hmm. and it's so important that uh, that you cross coordinate so if i throw with the right arm then it's the left foot pointing mm -hmm. at the goal and mm -hmm. the, the elbow to the shoulder 
-hmm. very important that you have mobility in your hip mm -hmm. so you can go around here mm -hmm. uh, and then that you run into the ball that you're not standing still mm -hmm. and when you pass it that you have your body towards the goal and that you are able to to pass a little uh, backwards when mm -hmm. you pass the ball that is uh, some of the main things mm -hmm. and then of course when they become better at doing that without defense then the most important thing is that you are able to pass under pressure I think this is a this is a really new thing. I saw it here in the U17. I think um, that you make passes. I think uh, 60 or 50 percent of the time with contact. Yeah. And with different situations, maybe uh, the left foot in front yeah, or the yeah. right foot in front. Exactly. To the left side, to the right side. Exactly. So you have a really um, yeah. high vari variety. Yeah, and that's and that's important when when. Because when you play handball, you don't look in this direction passing, you look in yeah. this direction. Yeah. And you are not making your teammate better if you are not able to go into a space and you are, can uh, handle a good pass with physical pressure. So that's mm -hmm. very important from under 15 and up that most of the passing is with physical pressure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, one question about the back to the coaching, mm -hmm. back to the coaching development. Mm -hmm. How is the the structure here in um, in Denmark. So when we could say, I don't know. So what is what is typical? The typical beginning for a coach to to go here is it? Uh, they, did they start early? Did they start late? Did they start after his career? Or a lot of parents maybe because sports is a huge impact in the culture. Well, you almost answered it because it's a. That is a combination. We have mm -hmm. almost 900 clubs mm -hmm. and there wouldn't be children's handball if there were not parents uh, using their spare time mm -hmm. going into the hall and starting there. So parents, uh, there's a lot of parenting coaching in the youth and mm -hmm. then you get very young uh, people in who, may, who played handball themselves, maybe got injured or maybe found out that they couldn't become as good as they wanted to and then they go in there and then mm -hmm. of course you also have uh, some coaches uh, <coughs> who have ended their own career going into coaches mm -hmm. <coughs> but there's because of the club structure there's a lot of tutoring in the in the clubs mm -hmm. and maybe sometimes a little uh, you can say anarchy uh, towards uh, the federation's development of the of the of the coaches because mm -hmm. of course you 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 need the different lecturers to go higher mm -hmm. in into that but uh, we also have a lot of coaches who haven't almost never been uh, into a trainer course and still going very high mm -hmm. they are a little uh, picked up by the time now because mm -hmm. of the ring convention i think that's very good uh, because you can have played very very good handball but uh, learning other to play handball is a different thing mm -hmm. um, um what is it, um, how many steps are there here in Denmark, in the Federation, to reach the highest uh, coaching license? Oh, well, you, you start with uh, some children trainer courses, mm -hmm. then you can have youth trainer courses, then you have some five different uh, trainer courses, um, which is very broad mm -hmm. and which is normal to have if you are maybe having under, under 15, under 17, maybe senior on the uh, next or first best level. Mm -hmm. Then you can go into another step, uh, test. It is called to come a diploma coach. Mm -hmm. And from that you can go into the master coach. Mm -hmm. So I think it must be six, six levels before you become a master coach. Okay, what are the, what is the main goal of the federation that they have a, idea or vision how the coaches should be so what topics are really which topic spends a lot of time for mm. and which parts are maybe <coughs> changed 15 years uh, ago oh that's i'm not sure i'm the right one to mm. to answer that but i think that <coughs> that of course the the education system is also changing due, mm -hmm. due to the handball is changing and the society is changing so i think in children's and youth handball it's it is uh, more more technical mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. uh, it's more about the coaching part, mm-hmm. the, the how you are working with other people. Uh, and then when they become older, then it gets more tactical, more physical. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, the last topic I think is really interesting. You are also uh, working uh, for the European Handball Federation. Yeah, I did that earlier. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How did they come? So what was your what was your in, uh, entrance into this uh, uh, world, it, and how was it? It was the, the the Danish Federation who asked me if I wanted. Mm-hmm. to be, uh, what can you say, picked for the Danish Federation mm-hmm. to be in the mm-hmm. European uh, Handball Federation. Uh, well, for me, because I like development in handball, then it was fantastic it was fantastic uh, to go around uh, in different European countries, uh, mm-hmm. um, trying to spread out the Danish way. Uh, I think just like you, a lot of other nations, they are also looking at Denmark, just like we are looking out. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of looking into, so it was very nice to, to go out in, in different nations and trying to give them insight in, in how we are developing Danish handball players. Oh, t- could you imagine that there was uh, one story or one country which you are really interested in? Oh, I, th- I think it was it was different from where you come. It was very interesting to go mm-hmm. to Hungary, where they uh, have that license. So mm-hmm. when I went there, then there was uh, 700 coaches in the hall because everybody need that uh, stamp or the license yeah. to go in. So through that was a very very interesting to see the culture having so many. Uh, coaches. Um, then I'm very fascinated uh, of Slo- Slovenian handball, mm-hmm. so I was very proud to to go there and see and talk to them and see how they work. And then it's also very interesting, uh, for example, to go to uh, Latvia, uh, smaller country, smaller handball countries, so to see how very very eager and dedicated persons are trying to keep up handball uh, in their country mm-hmm. it was then you really see how privileged we are in here in here in Denmark in order to develop handball uh, players so it's different angles different ideas you get from different countries mm-hmm. could you imagine that you go abroad sometimes no i don't think so no no why well my Family is. Uh, mm-hmm. We are very happy to be in this region. Uh, mm-hmm. I would like to be a consultant for other nations and help them to work. But but I I don't think I would go to a, to another country. Then I think I mm-hmm. have already done it. Oh okay okay and maybe when we when we just put the the family away maybe mm-hmm. so it's not you are. I don't know, 25 years old? So yeah, of course. 20 years uh, ago? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> it would be nice with the, with the adventure and it's mm-hmm. also nice to go around and meet other people. But when you have children going into school and yeah. they like their school and uh, then these things get so important. Mm-hmm. So, so, I, so I don't think so. Okay. But I like to go abroad being a tu- tutor, but, uh, mm-hmm. but, I, but I, I don't think I would go board as a coach maybe mm, to, to but as a make a challenge or yeah, no it should be a consultant for maybe for a federation to mm. work with their talent development that could be interesting okay one well, more klaus um i checked my my list <laughs> and i um, have a, now a really good and big overview and thank you so much for all these insights you're welcome and um, i can send you a lot of papers too <laughs> this is really good <laughs> in english <laughs> Tack, Thank you. Klaus. Selv tak.